This video presentation is made possible by the SLO County Department of Education and the SLO Co-Arts Collaborative. For over a century, the Central Coast of California has been a haven for people from all walks of life. Pioneers, entrepreneurs, farmers, innovators, artists, dreamers. People escaping the city life to find beautiful landscapes, rich culture, seeking prosperity, and most importantly, joy. For a lot of us, we find joy in art, whether we're makers or just lucky enough to enjoy the art of others. Hi, I'm Peter Henry Schroeder. I'm a local documentary filmmaker here in San Luis Obispo County. I invite you to come with me now as we actually get to go talk to some of these artists firsthand and learn about what makes them tick. What are some of the challenges they face and how do they do this on a day-to-day -day basis? Where does their inspiration come from and how do they actually find the joy in their art? What really gives them that creative juice? My name's Steve Osborne, and I've been painting 60 years. Now I'm strictly painting with oil. I used to paint watercolor, but uh, it's not as forgiving. And the kind of art that I like to do is everything from landscapes to portraits, still life, uh, memories from travel in Europe and other things. It's not just the fact that it's forgiving. If you don't like what you just painted, you can paint over and then correct it. I just like the uh, uh, depth of color and the uh, ability to blend colors. I was born in Riverside and lived uh, most of my life in California. Spent two years in the Army in Germany and lived in Indiana for 11 years before we moved back here to Paso Robles. I went to UCLA, studied business. I was in several businesses, ranged from real estate to wholesale distribution, but that was a, a past part of my life, not what I'm defined by now. I didn't start formal uh, instruction in art until um, I was about 30 years old. I don't think I had any particularly long-term dream, but just uh, uh, an inward uh, satisfaction and passion for creating something. I started the hard way, starting with uh, painting portraits, one of the most difficult uh, areas of, uh, of painting. All the instructors that I've had are passed away now, but they're uh, several of them legends from the Central Coast. Ted Gershner was uh, always considered the painter's painter. Everyone who painted would like to paint like Ted Gershner. And uh, he uh, taught me a lot about, particularly oil painting. And uh, the other one, of course, most people know of John Bernard from the North County. Most anyone who has painted in the North County area has great respect for John Bernard. I think everybody has some interest of one level or another in art, whether they are a painter or a sculptor or whatever. Artists have a passion that uh, is, I think, a gift from God. And I think it's a, just a personal uh, sense of feeling and when they see something that they want to paint or want to create a sculpture out of, that uh, they are attracted to it and they're inspired by it. Uh, and it's something that comes from within. The thing that uh, <clears throat> grabs my attention are everything from a scene of children running in Prague down the street in Czech Republic or the beautiful buildings in the uh, structures on the hillsides of Cinque Terre, Italy by the Italian Riviera. 
the reflection of the beautiful villages on the uh, shores of Lake Como, Italy. I'm, uh, I'm attracted. I think everybody sees something interesting in art, whether they're an artist or not, but they, some people like a single stroke in a particular painting, or they like uh, the color combination or the composition that the artist puts into the, the painting. But an artist uh, really has satisfaction out of just the act of creating something out of what he, he or she sees and feels. The training I've had experience of painting the life drawings with live models. That was the primary uh, reference when I was in the portrait painting mode at the very beginning. Uh, so we would have live models come in and model for 20 minute sittings and then break and then 20 minute sittings and so forth. Well, the thing that's the hardest about portrait painting is proportion. One of the most critical things that an artist uh, has to think about. He has to think about composition and about perspective and about proportion. And in portrait painting, <laughs> you are constantly measuring the proportion from the chin to the nose and from the top of the head to the eyes and the width of the face and the uh, shape of the face because everyone's face is a different shape. The eyes are the most important uh, and most difficult part of painting a portrait because you can tell so much from the eyes. Most people who are looking at a portrait painting zero in on the eyes and um, they tell a lot about the character of the person. Giacomo Puccini, uh, but I had a lot of fun painting him because We've had a long time passionate interest in his music. Right now, I'm, I'm painting portraits of uh, famous women who were difference makers in the world. And uh, those portraits are all on exhibit down in Paso Robles at the Crazy Woman Wine Shop. I have learned so much about uh, women who have made a difference in the world uh, from all parts of the world. And, the women so far that I've painted are women like Malala from Pakistan, who most people know because of her strong uh, promotion of women's right to education in Pakistan. And uh, Maya Angelou from the United States, and Indira Gandhi from Italy. And uh, most recently I just finished Sagata Ogata from Japan, who was a very strong proponent of women's rights. Now I'm just about to begin painting a Native American woman who uh, was very famous. Her name was Wilma Mankiller. And she uh, was the first female chief of a nation, of the Cherokee Nation. I like to try to capture uh, expressions in their face <coughs> that depict uh, character and the, and you can tell by an expression in their face how, uh, how serious they were about what they were doing. I've been painting portraits and then transitioned into painting some of the beautiful parts of the world that I see. You see things and think when you're in the, in the painting mode that maybe other people don't see when you're walking along. We were driving through Vermont in, in autumn and my wife was driving. I would suddenly say stop because I would see something that she didn't necessarily see. There was a scene that I wanted to paint this scene in Bellagio is one of our favorite spots. Most, uh, most artists kind of zero in on this particular scene. I learned after we had been there that the uh, owner of the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas uh, 
identifies this as his favorite place on earth also and that's how he came up with the name Bellagio for the hotel. It's one of the many villages around Lake Como that you can visit uh, uh, by ferry boat only. You can't drive there. It's, it's just a really a cool place to visit. So one of the next projects is to put the hanging lamp over so that it, uh, it'll appear about here, yeah. And <clears throat> I'll put uh, two or three people on the stairway going down. Pretty much all the things that an artist has to pay attention to, uh, perspective is the most important. And um, composition is very critical. How much do you want in? Do you want too much in? Or, or uh, less is more sometimes in a, in a landscape painting. And choose what kind of a focal point you want. It might be the, a small barn, as I painted in one of my portraits. In a vineyard scene, focal points are a critical part of landscaping. And the difference in the fadeaway of colors from the bright and dominant colors in the foreground to getting less and less detail as you go back into the background. So one of the paintings behind me is of uh, a sidewalk scene in Paris and to me, the focal point is a woman with a red umbrella with everything else happening. To me, that's the focal point that kind of attracts your eye to the center of the picture. Perspective is very critical and it's a learning, it's a learning, always a learning process to, to show a, a depth perception in a painting. If something is in the foreground, it's going to be a stronger color than it is if it's in the background. For example, the Canadian winter scene behind me. Uh, the mountains in the very background are not as definitive and detailed as the mountains in the foreground. The further away, some things become smaller, of course, the further away they are. Composition is very important. If you have light coming from the sun or from some source, that it's consistent throughout the painting. One of my paintings behind me is of wine bottles and a candle light on the table. I wanted to have the light reflected in the wine glass as well as uh, everything else in the room from the same direction. So that's part of composition. Landscapes are, of course, the most important part of showing perspective. A painting of a human face for example, or even the face of a dog or a pet. It's important to, uh, the, the lights and darks and the shadows are everything in painting a human face. To show the shadows uh, that bring out the, uh, the nose as, as part of the face protruding out from the, the rest of the face or the depth of the eyes. And the shadows are just critical in showing that part, that, that's the skill that a, that a portrait artist has to learn. The relationship of width and depth and height of a person's face and um, trying to capture the likeness. Creating skin colors, of course with uh, Caucasians you have uh, mixing uh, white with uh, some uh, yellow ochre and touch of ultramarine blue and sometimes uh, a touch of red that allows you to create some color and some life to a person's face. When you're painting a black person's skin, it's very fun because there are many colors 
that you add, including orange and purples, a lot of colors that come out, so the shadowing is very different. And now I'm painting the, the Native American who have a different kind of a skin tone. So it's uh, mixing uh, the primary colors in different proportions, learning what proportion of each of those colors you want to mix to get the skin tone that you want. It's a trial and error process. It's all a, a very fun challenge to, uh, uh, for an artist and uh, all part of the learning process and you never stop learning. I'm a detailed painter, so yeah, it's, sometimes I sh sh should paint with less detail. Sometimes it's better to paint looser, which is something that I'm trying to learn how to do now. Looser meaning painting with large brushes and a lot of paint on your brush and larger strokes. I don't spend as much time on the hair, although I'm learning now how to show the line where the hair meets the forehead. And it's very tricky to do that so it doesn't look like the person's wearing a wig. I'm painting with more confidence now at 90 years old than I ever have in my life. And it's because I've always focused on trying to learn and learning new skills. Well, if a person wants to learn how to paint with oils, I think it's important to take uh, lessons from someone who is very experienced, even if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. But it's important to uh, know that it's, it's not cheap because uh, oil paints are expensive and uh, you need to know how to paint efficiently and use the right amount of paint uh, so you don't overuse it because they don't last very long if once they're on your palette. Well, if a person wants to learn any uh, form of art, uh, discipline is pretty critical. Uh, discipline meaning that you, you need to uh, be fairly consistent in your practice to not do it once, once a month or once every two months. Like learning a musical instrument, it's the same thing. Uh, uh, practice, practice, practice. And uh, the discipline uh, means that uh, <laughs> it, whatever you learn uh, is something that you need to uh, build on and continually try to improve in. You're not going to improve unless you spend the time. That's, uh, that's the bottom line, learning uh, the paint or any art, really. One of my favorite stories about uh, painting in workshops is with Ted Gershner, when uh, at the end of the workshop session down in <coughs> Los Olivos, he asked uh, all the uh, participants in the workshop to bring one of their paintings that they had in their home if, if we didn't mind him painting something on top of what I already painted to possibly improve it. And so all of us brought a painting in. So I brought a painting in of uh, a scene in Onfleur, Normandy, that uh, was a scene of a, of a marina area that was classic, popular setting for artists because many artists had their easels set up out and were actually painting the scene there. Well. I brought that painting in to Ted Gershner and when he came around to that for his demonstration, he, he looks at it and he says, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I've made a lot of money painting this scene. He and his wife used to travel to Europe and on Fleur, Normandy, and this scene was one of the scenes that he had painted. So he had a lot of fun in painting the cloud scene and uh, painted over a tree that I had painted, his, his method of painting a tree. And I still hold, hold that painting as a special one in my home because it's a Osborne Gershner <laughs> painting now. 
But um, everyone in the everyone in the class got out their pencil and wrote down on Fleur Normandy <laughs> as the place that they should they probably better put on their list <laughs> to go to. But uh, yeah, that that was a special experience. I sell paintings, but I'm that's not why I paint. It's a passion and interest of mine. At my age, I, I'm a passionate reader and, of course, spend time with family locally, and uh, that's pretty much how I spend my life now. But uh, uh, I really couldn't go, I can't see myself going without painting. It's uh, something that uh, you have to do. You, know, you go a few days without painting and uh, you uh, miss it. Well, at my age, every day is exciting. <laughs> I hope <coughs> I hope to be able to paint for uh, many more years. My hope is to continually get better, and uh, uh, that's what's exciting about it. Isn't that something at my age to still have a desire to get better? And um, I think I'm in the right uh, setting and the right atmosphere and the right kind of community that will encourage me to get better. <laughs>